Hello everyone, today I'll be showing you how to make a Belzvini on the center knitting machine. Animal Crossing has always been one of my favorite childhood video games, so I wanted to make this in appreciation of it. And if you've made a beanie before, you'll know that the shape is very natural to the process. So it's a fairly straightforward design that everyone will be able to follow. All you'll need is a 48 pin knitting machine. Now, if you don't have a knitting machine, you can also do this on circular knitting needles, but it would be much faster to do it on the machine. A yarn needle and scissors. For the yarn colors, you're going to need a dark brown, middle brown, and light brown in medium weight yarn. I tried to find colors that match the bell symbol as closely as possible, so here I have Craft Smart Super Saver yarn. And you'll also need some dark red yarn for the bell strap, as well as a 5mm crochet hook and some stitch markers. Now for the construction, we're going to create this long tube. It's going to look very long, but don't worry because it's actually going to be folded once over itself and then it also needs enough length to create the rim of the beanie and the edge where it's tied off. And we want to alternate yarn colors at specific rows to make this pattern because this will save us quite a lot of time when we do the duplicate stitching for the design, which I wish I knew when I was filming this. After the base is made, I'll go over how to do the duplicate stitching to make this star design and then using the medium brown color to add the details of the circle and the folded areas. And then lastly, the bell strap, which would tie off the bell bag. Okay, so if that's all good with you, let's get started. For the start of the base, I'm going to use the middle brown color. And then I'm going to crank my knitting machine to the first pin and place the yarn under that pin with the tail end to the right. And as I turn, I'll alternate between putting the yarn one in front and one behind until I get to the start of the round again. Once at the start of the round, you can put your yarn into the yarn guide and tension guide. Here I'm using the loose tension position. From here, you just keep turning and turning, creating more and more rounds until you hit the 84th row. Now that I have 84 rounds in my middle brown color, I'm going to switch to my light brown. So to do this, I cut the yarn with some excess and I tie a square knot as closely as I can to the 48th pin so that it takes on this new color. Once that's done, you can put the yarn back into the yarn guide and continue cranking. So basically you'd continue the tube with this color until you hit the 100th and 17th row where you would switch back to the middle brown color once again. You do four rounds in this color and then finish off with the light brown until you have 140 rows total. Then to cast off, all you do is cut your yarn with about two feet of excess. You can remove your yarn from the yarn guides and turn past a few pins at a time. And using the needle, pick up the loops from the back and you can do multiple at once, it'll save some time, and then pull the needle through. And you do that all around until your tube is completely free from the machine. All right, so now you have this very long, beautiful tube. I like to stabilize the top and bottom row with my crochet hook by doing a round of slip stitches in every loop. This will help keep the ends a consistent size while I work on it. If you'd like a more detailed explanation on that, I do have a short form tutorial, but it's really just slip stitches. Now you can treat this like a front and a back by putting a stitch marker on the 48th stitch and the 24th stitch of this round. First, I'll create the star design and stitch mark where the first stitch will go. Then I'll thread my needle with about two to three feet of the dark brown yarn and tie a loose knot on the needle and secure the other end to the inside of the work. You'll want to place a piece of paper or cardstock into the center of the tube so that you don't accidentally sew into the other side as you create your duplicate stitches. I've thread my yarn through so that it's coming out of the stitch below the one I want to duplicate. Then I'll thread it through the two loops of the V above that one and insert the needle back into the center of the stitch below. Basically, you're tracing the yarn to create a horseshoe shape or a V shape of the stitch you want to duplicate. And then the needle will go through the starting point of the next stitch to duplicate. It can take a few tries to get the hang of it, so I'll show you a few more. So again, I'm starting from the center of the stitch below the one I'm duplicating and then threading my needle through the two loops above that stitch and then feeding it back into the center of the stitch below. Then the needle will come back out where the next duplicate stitch will begin. So here I've done the first two stitches of the corner point, and now I'm going to do the third row, which involves duplicating two stitches next to each other. 
So with my yarn in the V below the stitch I'm duplicating, I'll thread it through the two loops above that one and then back into the center of the V below. And since I'm also duplicating the stitch next to it, my needle is going to the center point of the V below that next one. Then it's the same process for this one, just thread the needle through the two loops above the stitch you're duplicating and then back into the center of the one below it. So I'm going to work on this corner point. Once I run out, I'll tie it to the inside and then tie in a new strand to continue. And of course, don't forget to put your paper back into the center of the tube so that you don't accidentally sew to the other side. Now I'm just repeating the same process but on the right corner point and once that's done I'll do the center, work into the two sides of the star and work into the top corner. Alright so I'll let you follow the star part of the graph, it's also linked below and I'll meet you back here once it's done. <laughs> Once that's done, we can start adding the bag details with the medium brown yarn. So I actually did the star on both sides, front and back, but it's totally up to you if you want to do that. And now I'm going to be working on this from the side, so all you have to do is turn the paper in the tube 90 degrees so that you can get a flat view of the side. To give the bells bag more dimension and make it look like a circle from the front, I'm going to add two peaks to the sides so that it curves into a circular shape. On the graph, I'm actually just mirroring it so that I am doing both the front and the back at once. And I find that having the stitch marker there does help me find where the access is to mirror over, kind of like a locator in Maya. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish the two peaks on both the front and back and I'll meet you back here. And hopefully you did the four rounds of brown in the middle because that will save you quite a bit of time. And finally, the last part of the duplicate stitching section is to add the full details to the top. So this is also just the same process duplicate stitching to follow the design. From here, things will start to make more sense why it was so long to begin with. We are going to fold the end side into itself. And then the bottom will also create a folded rim for the edge of the hat. So you can see that it's doubled up now. And next I'm gonna work on attaching the first row and the last row together. So with my light brown yarn, I'm going to put a slip knot on my crochet hook. Then I'll slip my hook through the first loop and the last loop and do a slip stitch. And from there, you just repeat the same process, working all the way around until all the first loops and last loops are joined together. When you get to the start of the round, you can just slip stitch into the first one you made. Now you can see that the inside has this nice clean inner lining and the ends from our design are all secured and tucked in. The only ends to weave in are really the ones that we just made from finishing this round. The last step will be to create the bells tie. Basically, I'm going to make a long rectangle. For this, I cast on 40 with the red yarn and I kept it on the tube setting so that it doesn't lock up at any point and I worked this like a panel. So on the edge stitch, I make sure that the working yarn goes underneath the last notch before turning, and this is going to create a thin rectangle, so I only did 10 rows. Once completed, I cast off the same way I did the tube. Now to stabilize the stitches and give it a bit more structure, I did single crochets into the perimeter stitches and in the corner stitches I'll chain two and then single crochet into the same stitch to give it a bit of a harder corner. And once you get to the start of the round, you can slip stitch into the beginning. Then you can just cut and weave those ends. Finally, the last step is to tie off the top of your hat with your bell strap. I did this by making a double knot. And there you have it, your bell's beanie is complete. If you followed along and want to share your creations with me, my Instagram handle is at Kim's Threads. I'd be so happy to see how they turned out. Alright, I'm gonna go shake some trees. See you guys next time.